Well, hello and welcome back. Today on the bench we have a Colt government model that is fitted with a Schwartz safety. Now, the Schwartz safety was considered a significant improvement in safeties. Um, this was introduced in 1937 and uh, there was always controversy around the safe way to carry a pistol with a round in the chamber. Um, being one of the things with these uh, 1911 and government model designs is the accidental discharge was possible if it was a drop. Now the Schwartz safety solved that problem by creating a firing pin block and uh, Schwartz was an engineer for Colt and he filed for a patent in April of 1937 was granted a patent in December of 1938 for this safety design. Now the first pistol with this safety design was manufactured in October of 1937 and these are also found in the Super 38 as well as the government model as we see here on the bench. Now some of the things about these there was about 25,000 of these in the serial number range and that falls from approximately C uh, 185,000 to C 215,000. Now out of that uh, sh uh, serial number range 6,575 of those frames were transferred to a uh, military contract of Colts in 1942. Now, most of these uh, were sold overseas, approximately 13,000 of them, and it's uncertain how many of these were sold in the U.S., but it's believed to be only about 12 to 1,500. Now, the short safety design was discontinued after World War II, and it was uh, not installed in pistols that were already milled for that part. So I guess it was thought to be unnecessary by Colts. Now Colts later on introduced the uh, Series 80 after uh, gun safety regulations called for a firing pin block. But we'll get into that later. Now I'm going to go ahead and stop the camera here. And we'll go ahead and take the uh, pistol apart so we can get a closer look at the uh, Schwartz safety and how it works. So I'll be right back. Okay, so here we are back with the pistol disassembled, and we'll go ahead and we'll take and just start with the slide. And you can see here we have, we'll go ahead and zoom in just a little bit so we can see this a little bit better. But we, here we have the, uh, the firing pin lock here, and you can see as it's pushed by the firing pin actuator, or a toothpick in this case, how it's moving up and allowing the firing pin to pass because what is done to the firing pin is it has this groove here and we'll go ahead and we'll grab another firing pin that's not modified so you can see the two side by side and what we have here is how this is milled out or turned out right here and how it's playing right here just left the same so that firing pin lock can grip it and keep it from moving or actually block it from moving I shouldn't say grip it but it won't allow it to move past it will be captured at this point and it can't move forward anymore so there's some of the differences in this, the uh, slide and one other difference in the slide is here we have our uh, regular extractor and then here we have the uh, or I should say this is the regular one and then here we have the short safety so you can see the difference in those two where this one has the second half of this knob taken off of it right here so there's a little bit of difference in the slide and then moving on to the frame there's a piece that is of course we'll start with the top here where we have the disconnector hole here and then we have the hole where the firing pin actuator comes out and then of course there's a corresponding slot milled in here I don't know if we're going to be able to see it 
here we can see the light down in there, but there's a little channel that's milled out in the frame right here for that to slide up and down. So we'll just go ahead and uh, grab our parts and put this together real quick so you can see it. And here is our disconnector. We'll go ahead and put that in real quick. And then this piece right here is, of course, the firing pin actuator. And you can see what that looks like. Pretty simple in design. Just one little piece and then we'll go ahead and we'll put this in and it just slides right in to its appropriate spot there. Grab our sear real quick and then I always like to use a toothpick to hold this if I can have any luck here getting it to work this time. There we go. And we'll grab our sear pin. Put that in real quick. Now that we have those installed, we'll go over here and grab our grip safety. And then we'll borrow our hammer pin real quick. And then we'll take and zoom in here a little bit and hopefully we'll have enough light in there. Oh good, we can see it. So you can see here as the grip safety moves, firing pin actuator moves up and down. And of course, you can see it right there. So there we go. That's a pretty simple design in a that firing pin block and the way it works and we'll go ahead and we'll put our pistol back together and then we'll uh, take one last look at it. Okay well here's the pistol back together again now and you can see uh, the uh, Schwartz firing pin safety block was really a pretty ingenious design uh, well put together uh, very simple. Um, I, it looks to me as though, in my humble opinion, it's much simpler than the Series 80 firing pin lock, and better yet, it even works off of the grip safety and no interference with the trigger. But whatever the case, I'm sure Colt had its reasons for uh, not using the Schwartz firing pin safety in the uh, Series 80. So uh, there you go, the Schwartz firing pin safety system. I hope you enjoyed this short video and an introduction to that. And uh, thanks for tuning in and watching, and have a great evening.